I can absolutely see how you do, do, does it do, does your head in as a first year undergraduate, as a second year undergraduate, as a third year undergraduate, and as a professor of physics, it does my head in. So it's um, yeah, it's it's a very tricky concept. So one symbol that's very important to me is the symbol J, and uh, it represents a part of a complex number, and it has a very special significance because to all physicists and engineers, J squared equals minus one. And uh, that sounds already to be an extraordinary kind of object. Uh, it's something that has only been appreciated for a few hundred years in mathematics. Uh, the idea that we can find the square root of a negative number. And we call it uh, naturally an imaginary uh, number. Well, yeah, I, I can explain the, the conundrum of a, a square root of a negative number. If I take zero and square it, I get zero. If I take one and square it, I get one. And if I do the same with the negative numbers now, minus one squared, unfortunately, is plus one. And minus two squared, unfortunately, is plus four. So you can't get at the negative side of the axis with a square until you use j. No, I'd call, if I understand correctly, what Seamus calls j, I would call that i, in that it's a square root of minus one. For me, j would be something like a current density. So we, the difficulty here is that we've got the sort of same letters that have been used in multiple senses. And actually that does make it quite difficult, for example, for undergraduate students to get, get their heads around some of these concepts when we keep chopping and changing. A long time ago, it, it was uh, depicted by the Greek symbol iota. And I think that people have always associated iota with either something very small or something very, very abstract indeed. Um, and over the years, because I is used for so many other things, uh, J has become the, the preferred symbol. We are certainly set in our ways in that you won't get many physicists who will sort of go over to the dark side of the engineers and start using J, for example. But that's a question of the culture you've built, you, 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 you grow up in. I guess as things become more interdisciplinary, we might start to see a little bit more um, cohesion in terms of the um, usage of, of symbols. Yeah. J is all about rotation. It's about things that go uh, round and round or that oscillate up and down in some kind of uh, sinusoidal or smooth way. And uh, J has particular significance in what we call the, the complex plane. Can you get your head around, I know you use it, but can you get your head around the idea of an, an imaginary number? Um, in truth, no. Um, it's a device. It's only a mathematical convenience. It's a way to help us to use the equations to get a prediction. Although we can mathematically represent it and mathematically represent it with I, for example, we cannot observe it. It's not an observable quantity. It's not a physically observable quantity. And the output and the input are both real things. They're both measurable instantaneous quantities like displacement and force or voltage, something we can measure. Um, inside, in the middle of this mathematical process, we use some numbers that you can't measure. You could never measure an imaginary quantity. And yet, they help us to make the right prediction of what comes out. In terms of, of I, I is a really, really important um, constant, a really important number for, um, uh, for physicists. Does that, but do you see how that looks to people? Like, you understand it, but can you imagine how that looks to people like me? I can perfectly well imagine how it looks and I distinctly remember uh, first encountering the concept of an imaginary uh, number and uh, there are some superb papers written that in fact discount the idea that we should ever use J on the grounds that it conceals some structure that we could explain by another means. And so yes, this, this, the, the, the way complex numbers and this, these mathematical quantities are linked into these very fundamental theories of physics and the physical world means that, yes, there are things that, although we can express them mathematically, we certainly have not got our heads completely around. But in actual fact, it's proven its value in engineering. It's taught in all undergraduate courses, probably from engineering courses from the first year, and uh, it simplifies all of our calculations in dynamics.